Um, I'd first of all like to introduce Mr. Ivan McKee, who is the Minister for Trade, Innovation and Public Finance with the Scottish Government. Um, we've been delighted to see Mr. McKee join us uh, frequently at various activities and he's uh, a very strong supporter of the bioeconomy in Scotland. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Mr. McKee and, and um, let him address you. Thanks very much, Mark. And it's, um, it's great to be here. Uh, returning again to the iBioIC conference now, as you mentioned, in its seventh year and for the first time, obviously an entirely virtual event. And of course, offered this year completely free of charge by iBioIC. So thanks very much to yourself, Mark, and the rest of the team for uh, for inviting me back. Um, and it's um, the theme of the conference this year, of course, is towards net zero growing the bioeconomy. And I think it looks at a very engaging and interesting two days with a range of exciting speakers and discussions to, to look forward to on subjects of such great importance. As you mentioned, more than 700 registrations this year, a significant growth of the event since last year and on previous years. And of course, an international audience this year as well, as you mentioned, and that's obviously one of the advantages of this new form of, uh, of communication that we've all had to get so used to over the last day. Uh, the last 10 months or so, but I think it also recognises and reflects the global recognition of Scotland's biotechnology sector and its potential, and that's something I want to cover uh, in my remarks uh, remarks this morning. But first of all, just to reflect back on the, the ongoing response to the pandemic, and firstly, just to say I hope everyone is safe and well and is coming through these very difficult and challenging times as best you can, and likewise that your businesses are surviving. You'll be aware of the significant support the government has put in to be able to support businesses through these difficult times. But really, I just want to pay um, tribute to the resilience of businesses and of the sector that's come through this um, in, 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 in a better shape than could have been expected. So that's, uh, that's well recognised. Over the past year, I've had the pleasure of uh, speaking with the iBioIC and representatives from the, the Scottish Bioeconomy Council and a number of companies from the, the biotechnology community in Scotland, including ILC Therapeutics, Ingenza, 3F Bio, Marine Polymers, and, and others. And it's been great to see the progress they're making um, in the current environment. And also interesting to reflect, as Mark said, that the sector is hugely important and central to the two great challenges that we face at the moment, the response to the pandemic and the fight against, the, against climate change. And that fight against climate change continues despite the pandemic, of course, we have COP26 coming up in uh, Glasgow later this year, postponed from, from last year due to the, the COVID situation. But that, of course, is an event of, uh, of great global importance that aims to accelerate action on the climate emergency. And uh, Scottish Government working closely with the UK Government, our partners in the Glasgow, to deliver a memorable and effective COP26 in November. And, as Scotland, we've really got four key aims for, for COP26. First of all, securing ambitious and tangible commitments on climate change. Secondly, inspiring all of Scotland and our citizens to move even faster towards net zero and doing that through the very important mechanism of the just transition that we've championed. Thirdly, of course, to ensure a safe and successful event. And of course, it is, um, it is a, a, a significant event taking place uh, in Glasgow with a number of attendees and the amount of work that goes into making that, uh, that work as it should. And then fourthly, and very, very importantly, using it as an opportunity to demonstrate Scotland's place in the world and in the fight against climate change through our innovation, um, our businesses, and the wider partnerships here and internationally we've been able to, able to forge. And iBioIC, of course, is a key partner for us in delivering on our ambitions and priorities. And it successfully established itself as a lead organisation, the lead organisation, industrial biotechnology in Scotland over the past years. And the Innovation Centre continues to forge links between industry and academia to make Scotland a significant player in the global bioeconomy. And the importance of those links, and as Mark mentioned, and like him, I am also passionate about working across academia, the Innovation Centre and industry, and making sure we're able to commercialise the tremendous um, innovation and research coming out of our world beating universities to start up and spin out businesses and growing those businesses to scale so they can make an impact on Scotland's manufacturing landscape. 
So turning to look at the, the sector and the progress we've made, uh, made so far, uh, this conference, uh, two years ago in 2019, I launched the National Plan for Industrial Biotechnology for 2020 to 25. I mean, the plan aims to grow uh, IB-related turnover, business turnover to 900 million over that period and increase the number of IB active companies in Scotland to over 200 by the end of that period. And we're making good progress and the plan focuses on five key themes and I want to talk a wee bit about each of them in, uh, in turn and it's important to recognise and see that despite the challenges we're facing with the ongoing pandemic we're continuing to make positive progress towards the targets set out in that national plan. So first of all, delighted to see that the latest iBioIC analysis reporting that industrial biotechnology related turnover for 2019 in Scotland was £747 million. Pounds. So it puts us well on track to meet that planned target of £900 million by 2025. And turning to look at the, uh, the elements of the plan and the great projects and collaborations that are underway to push us along to meet those targets. First one is around about uh, the pol uh, policy and public engagement. And I think that's absolutely key. And, and I've had this conversation with, uh, with Mark and others in the sector. It's really key to uh, understanding of the sector as a key part of the solution to climate change and making sure that that understanding is spread through as wide an audience as possible. And I, bio, I see other, along with other Scottish innovation centres, teamed up with the Herald newspaper to hold a virtual event countdown to COP26 in November, with a variety of speakers and sessions to mark one year until that event. And that was a great opportunity to increase public awareness of industrial biotechnology as an innovative, sustainable and green technology, and as a key part of the solution to the climate challenges we face. The second theme is around about industry engagement, and again, we've mentioned that, and Mark's mentioned that, and those critical links between academia, government, and business. And iBioIC's work with the KTP, the Knowledge Transfer Network, to target existing Scottish companies who could adapt industrial biotechnologies through their bioeconomy cluster builder. It's a three-year project supported by the European Development Fund. So that's a key example of the work that's happening on that industry engagement theme. The third theme focuses on innovation, um, and that's to target and facilitate collaborations and partnerships. And there's so many of those ongoing, but I just want to mention a few. The Whiskey Project launched in December, where three iBioIC member companies, Horizon Proteins, Myalgae, and Biopower Technologies, work collaboratively on the sustainably driven project to ensure further ways to extract maximum value from whiskey co-products. The project is led by iBioIC, co-funded by Zero Waste Scotland, with additional support from the Scotch Whiskey Research Institute, which is the industry's leading research organisation. And I think that really talks to and shows a great example of the power of that joined up approach. And there have been some great examples of Scottish industrial biotechnology companies' ability to leverage UK government funding. Scottish companies Oceanium, they're developing food and nutrition products and marine safe home compostable biopackaging materials from sustainably farmed seaweed. And Cellucomp, they're working with the, the, the fabulous uh, James Hutton Institute um, and with Haley Stevenson's to develop multi-use washable environmentally friendly PPE materials that have been granted funding through Innovate UK Sustainable Innovation Fund, which is a £134 million investment pot. And recycling technologies, along with consortia partners, Nestle Corporation and Unilever, have been awarded over 3 million funding through the UK Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund Smart Sustainable Packaging Programme for a chemical recycling plant in Perth. And that plant will use thermal cracking to recycle a wide range of hard to recycle plastics, such as films, sachets and pouches that cannot be recycled by conventional methods. So all of that great innovation really focused on the fight against climate change, and the opportunities for the recycling economy in Scotland. The fourth key theme focuses on skills, and that is absolutely central to, to everything we do. Um, it's so important to the future of the sector and to offering job opportunities to people across Scotland um, as we come out of the pandemic in these difficult times. And iBioIC and its members have developed an extensive PhD programme utilising the biotechnology and biological sciences research council collaborative training partnership programme supporting 91 students since 2014 with a further 18 due to start this year. 
And this programme is designed to ensure that students are equipped with the technical knowledge and transferable skills needed for their future careers. And I know that you'll be hearing over the course of the next two days about the work some of these PhD students are engaged in and very much look forward to, to hearing from them. Fourth Valley College and iBioSC have been working alongside the Lighthouse Labs and Skills Development Scotland to support the training requirements for new recruits into the COVID-19 testing centres. So critical in the fight against COVID and I can tell you the Glasgow Lighthouse Lab, um, and I would say this wouldn't I, but it's recognised as the best uh, lab across the whole of the UK for mass testing. And, and I think the cooperation that we've seen between the college, iBioIC and others has really ensured uh, that place. Um, and iBioIC's ability demonstrated to pivot their extensive knowledge and expertise in laboratory practices to support this crucial diagnostic testing activity has been invaluable and a reflection on the importance of the biotechnology community in our response to the ongoing pandemic. And final, the final theme round about biorefining. And talk about Celtic Renewables and the work that they're doing to support our biorefining and commercialisation ambitions while also developing sustainable indigenous supply chains with their low carbon refinery demonstration project, which took a significant step forward in September with delivery of fermentation tanks to their site in Grangemouth, with the plant expected to be operational later this year. The project has been delivered using funding from the Energy Investment Fund delivered by Scottish Enterprise together with private investment and a crowdfunding campaign. So what's the Scottish Government doing to support industrial biotechnology? Scotland, as you've seen, is a wealth of innovative companies who are developing and testing new technologies which could have great commercial impact if adopted effectively. And the Scottish Government and our agencies are keen to support companies who are doing just that. And one of the key challenges we hear from the biotechnology community is just about that challenge of scaling up to commercialise, as Mark highlighted, and how to finance the next step from R&D and innovation into full-scale, high-value manufacturing and creating those jobs in Scotland's manufacturing sectors. And the ability to leverage funding for innovation is a key element within the national plan. And recent policies that support this from the Scottish Government include the Inward Investment Plan, where the transformation of the chemical sector was identified as a key opportunity area for Scotland globally. And I know that the team that, uh, that wrote the plan worked very closely with iBioIC to make sure that the plan reflected the work that they are doing and the opportunities in that transformation. A supply chain development programme detailed in our programme for government that I also lead, which is focused on building up local indigenous supply chains in Scotland in sectors where we have tremendous potential due to our technological abilities. That programme is rolling across a number of sectors, including focused on the work of iBioIC. The launch of the Scottish National Investment Bank, and I know that iBioIC have been working with representatives from the bank um, to make sure that the focus of the bank takes into account the great work that's happening in the sector in Scotland. Our, Scot our capital investment plan, which I'll be launching next month, which focuses on, again, Scotland's tremendous opportunities to attract international private capital investment to help the growth journey of our key startup and scale up businesses to make sure that they can access those funds and grow to proper scale as quickly as possible. And again, that will have a real focus on the ability of this sector to attract those funds and what we as government can do to provide that portal and that access to those international capital investment markets. And finally, Scotland's vision for trade document I published um, in two weeks ago, which lays out Scotland's vision for how we want to trade internationally and for an exporting sector like biotechnology, that is absolutely key, tackling head on the key challenges um, and balances we need to strike to make sure Scotland is both um, seen as an ethical trading nation uh, and also maximises the ability of our businesses to export overseas. And of course, our ambition to be a net zero economy by 2045 is absolutely central to the focus of the Scottish Government. And when managed carefully, renewable resources can be harnessed to transform manufacturing in Scotland away from fossil fuels and towards that sustainable bio-based economy. And our rich and diverse range of renewable bioresources in Scotland will help us to boost prosperity through green growth, which of course is a huge and key objective of the Scottish Government. 
The growth of bioeconomy is crucial to reduce Scotland's dependency on carbon intensive feedstocks and to make our manufacturing sector more sustainable and to contribute to that so important transition in Scotland to a net zero emissions economy. So just for a wind up, I just want to mention some of the great speakers that are coming up over the next two days. And I think you've got an awful lot to look forward to. Lord Cannon, who's the UK Government Minister for, for Climate, and Steve Bagshaw, the non-exec chairman of Fujifilm Biosynth Biotechnologies, will be joining Dame Anne Glover, the iBioIC chair in conversation tomorrow. And Lord Debin, chairman of the Committee on Climate Change, and Professor Mercedes Maroto Valla, Director of the Research Centre for Carbon Solutions at Heriot Watt University and the UK Champion for Industrial Decarbonisation Research and Innovation Centre, will join a panel of speakers considering biotech as a solution to climate challenges later this morning. So just to finish up, this sector has got such a huge potential. Um, it's extremely well placed and Scotland is extremely well placed to benefit from it. And as Mark mentioned, the collaboration and innovation, working together to deliver that great research potential, building that sector and those businesses and scaling them up as fast as possible, working together with the government, our agencies, the innovation centre, our universities, and of course business is absolutely critical to delivering that. So thank you very much for listening. I want to hand back to iBioIC Chief Exec Mark Bustard, and I hope that you enjoy the next two days and I hope that I've got the opportunity when we get back to normal to engage in real life with as many of you as possible. Thank you very much.